I'm sure, like me, there's times in your life you wished you would have taken heed to warnings. And today, in this portion in 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 1 through 12, we see that uh, the king Ahab is just not going to heed the warnings of the Lord. And I hope that we can learn from this that anything God does to warn us or to give us instruction is because he deeply loves us and he has our best interest in mind. In fact, what the enemy wants to do is he wants us to forget that. And that's what happened to Ahab. And we see the disastrous outcome. So let's take some time today together. Thank you for letting me come into your group, into your home, and share with you. It is such a privilege. First Kings chapter 22, verses 1 through 12. For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. But in the third year, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went down to see the king of Israel. The king of Israel has said to his officials, Don't you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us, and yet we are doing nothing to retake it from the king of Aram? So he asked Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight against Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, First, seek the counsel of the Lord. So the king of Israel brought together the prophets, about four hundred men, and asked them, Shall I go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Go, they answered, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? The king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There is still one man through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me but always bad. He is Micaiah son of Imla. The king should not say that, Jehoshaphat replied. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Bring Micaiah son of Imla at once. Dressed in their royal robes, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah were sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor by the entrance of the gate of Samaria, with all the prophets prophesying before them. Now Zedekiah, son of Canaanah, had made iron horns, and he declared, This is what the Lord says, With these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. All of us like peace. As a mom of five kids, I can tell you I enjoyed peace and I pursued peace. In the verse, first verse here, it says, For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. It says in Psalms 34, it says, Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. That's one of God's commands to us, that we're to seek peace and pursue it. So I think Ahab should have heeded that warning and left well enough alone. But he decided at King Jehoshaphat's visit, King Jehoshaphat was a young king, probably in his mid-twenties, and he comes to visit and maybe Ahab was kind of like strutting his kingliness a little bit. And he was saying, hey, by the way, you know, there's some land down here that belongs to us. Now, in actuality, Ahab was given the land of Aram, and he did not completely annihilate them as God is in, had instructed. He wouldn't be in this situation if he had finished the task that God gave him. So the first thing we see is he should have pursued peace, and the second thing is he wouldn't have been in this situation if he would have obeyed God and heeded the plans that God had originally. I think that if King Ahab had a theme song, it would be, I did it my way. That was, all, that was King Ahab. Everything was about him. He was probably what we would in the, the field of psychology call a narcissist. 
It was all about him. He was so puffed up with himself. He was so consumed with his own uh, thoughts and his, the preoccupation of his heart that he really was losing touch with reality and had been far removed from God's principles and obedience. Now, he decides that he wants this land for personal gain. So he goes to the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, and he says, Will you join me? Now, Jehoshaphat, he's young, but he's wise. And he says, Well, let's first seek the voice of the Lord. Let's see what God says. How many problems in our life could be avoided or have been avoided because we sought the Lord first? Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his right standard of living, and all these things will be added to you. So the king of Israel summoned about 400 of his prophets, and of course we know these were the prophets of Baal. These were not God's prophets. And he asked them, Should I go war, to war against Ramoth Gilead, or should I hold back? And they all replied, O king, go right ahead. The Lord will give the king the victory. And I could see Jehoshaphat sitting there, and he was kind of a little bit leery. And he says, well, let's, uh, how about if we do this? Let's see if there's a prophet that hears from the Lord. And uh, so Ahab says, well, there is one prophet, Micaiah, and um, I don't like him, though, because he never says what I want to hear. He only says bad things about me. Well, there was a reason for that. Micaiah knew that King Ahab was not a man that was following God. He knew he was not a godly king. And so he, he calls and he tells this servant, I want you to go, a commander, I want you to go and bring this prophet Micaiah to me. In the meantime, there's this great pageantry that takes place. And we see King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat on their royal thrones, and I can just picture this, having been to Israel, they're sitting on their royal thrones in all their royal robes, and they're having this discussion. It must have been this sight, because all of Ahab's prophets are you know, just really bowing to him, and, oh, king, you're so wonderful, and they're saying whatever they want. He wants them to hear, and, and they give him a false report because they're afraid of him. And maybe they've drank a little bit of the punch themselves. And they've kind of bought into this whole thing that King Ahab is really the, their idol and, and they're guilty of idol worship of a king. Because remember again, idol worship is displeasing to God. And so we see they're sitting on the throne. And one of the prophets, Zedekiah, he makes this actual iron horn and he starts taking it around and he says... This is what the Lord said. With these horns you will gore the Arameans to death. And all the prophets said, I agree, yes, for the Lord will give you this king victory. In the last days, we need to be especially discerning and listen to the voice of the Lord because it says in the last days, even the very elect will be deceived. We can look at this portion of scripture and say, oh, those prophets of you know, Baal, they were just, you know, they were out in left field. Let me tell you, it is not that hard to be straight from the truth if we're not keeping our eyes on Jesus. The word says, keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to heed God's word. We need to heed his warnings so that we can walk in strength and obedience, so that we are not deceived. So today, my exhortation as I'm looking at this portion of Scripture is that we would be wise and that we would measure out our days in wisdom and keep our eyes on Jesus, so that as the days grow darker and darker, we won't be like these prophets of Baal and be deceived and be deceived by an evil king, but we will follow only King Jesus. The New Testament says, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, immortal invisible, the only wise God, be glory and honor forever. That's our prayer. 
that we and our, our allegiance and alliance would only be to the King, the King of the universe, our Lord and Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, today we come to you, and Lord, we pray that you will give us a heart to follow you. As David said, my soul follow us hard after you. That, Lord, we would not be like the prophets of Baal and run after false gods, but that, Lord, we would seek you first and we will have no idols before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.